illuminators and air separators are used in hydronic and radiant heating systems to remove unwanted air. A separator and an eliminator perform the same function, but they have a slightly different build. It's important to remove air trapped in closed loop systems because it causes faster aging of iron parts and creates gaps, which then create line noise and reduce efficiency. If it's a hydronic or radiant system, you want water touching all surfaces of the pipe and no air bubbles at all, so energy transfer is completely uninhibited. When iron parts rust, the rust gets in the water. And when rust is in the water, it lowers its heat transfer ability which again reduces the efficiency of the system. So rust would impede the flow of energy transfer if it's in there. Rust affects cast iron because rust is another name for iron oxide, which forms when iron reacts with moisture and oxygen. Air bubbles in your system are obviously made up of oxygen, so eliminating air will eliminate potential rust of cast iron parts. Bronze and stainless steel components aren't affected by rust because they don't contain any iron. Here's an example of how air elimination works. This system contains air bubbles, as you can see, but when it flows through this air elimination rig, the water comes out with no air, and the water travels more smoothly through the system. The process of air elimination is simple and automatic. As long as there's air going through the system, this float will stay down, and the air from the system will go up through the side of the float and out of the top. Once all the air is gone from the system, then there's no air to go into this chamber, only water. So water fills this mechanism and the float rises to the top, which then turns off the air valve mechanism at the very top. This is an air separator. It has the same basic process as air eliminators, but air separators may include a mesh mechanism that breaks down air bubbles before being released through the top vent, as you can see here. Other than that, it has the same float piece system inside. Sometimes this float can get stuck at the top because of how some of the spring mechanisms are built. So it's a good idea to tap your air eliminator with a hammer every once in a while to make sure it's not jammed. There are also these high capacity air eliminators, in case you are working with a large system. It has the same basic makeup, but is larger for commercial use. When you're looking for a place to install your air eliminator, the top of the boiler is a perfect spot, because that's where the water is at its highest temperature and it's at its highest velocity. If you want to install your air eliminator somewhere else, just make sure it's at least 18 inches away from any elbow because these bubbles need to rise to the top of the pipe and there's too much noise near the elbow for the air bubbles to be released. This is the bottom feed of the air eliminator. It makes it possible to connect whatever you want. Maybe it's just to a boiler, but you may also attach an expansion tank, pressure reducing valve, a backflow preventer, a shutoff valve, or everything on the same connection if you want. Air eliminators and air separators can come with the connection options of sweat, threaded, and press connections. This here is a threaded connection, as you can see by the inner grooves. And most air eliminators are installed horizontally like this, where the pipe just goes in simply like that. But as you can see here, there are uh, air eliminators that are installed vertically, where the pipe runs like this. So that's all you need to know about air eliminators. If you have any questions about things I may not have covered, you can ask us in the comments section, or reach us at our contact information in the description. Uh, if you like the video, then press like and subscribe to our channel because we're going to come out with a lot more videos on our products.